Thanks so much for joining us in this third and final installment of the Critical Thinking series here from the Mortar and Pestle. Again, my name's Luke Betchner, and I'm here to help you with the critical thinking as a general introduction to our doctrine series that's coming up very shortly. In the first video, we covered what is critical thinking, why do you need it, when do you apply it, and the second one, we covered three things you don't want to do as a critical thinker, and then in this video, we're covering three things you always want to do as a critical thinker. So as we finish this series, we're just kind of going to cover those three principles that you always want to do. First of all, you always want to ensure that you resist change toward your belief, toward your thoughts, until you have properly qualified where that pressure for change is coming from and what supports it. Why? Because truth doesn't change because of pressure. Feelings do. There's a lot of people that are in families together and certain family members make certain choices to go certain ways or believe certain things and the other family members are tempted to be sort of dragged along with them and all of a sudden they're willing to capitulate and to reevaluate everything they've ever believed to try to stay connected to that family member that's an extremely hard thing to do but there's a lot of families in that position maybe the situation's about homosexuality maybe it's about the death penalty maybe it's about abortion things that people care about that impact them very deeply and the question is are you going to just change what you believe because there's pressure to do so? You're going to find a new way to look at the facts because there's pressure or are the facts still exactly as they always have been? Always resist that change. If you're going to use your mind to make a decision, you need to resist that change until you have qualified that and determined whether or not the pressure that's coming towards you is actually of the truth or if it's of deception. Secondly, the thing you always want to do is make sure that you're being intellectually honest. This is one of the biggest things that it seems so hard to find. Being intellectually honest is, in short, being willing to admit that good people say bad things and bad people say good things, right? That's the best example I could give you. Is something true just because Abraham Lincoln said it? Or is something false just because Adolf Hitler said it? Those two figures are very broadly defined as good and bad in our minds. But... Are we unwilling to admit that one of them's right and one of them's wrong because of who it is? You cannot decide things based on how you feel, as we talked about in the second video. Being intellectually honest means you're allowed to qualify what people have said. Say, for instance, somebody who's a false teacher said something that's true. Okay, so they said something that's true. You don't have to make a further admission than that. Just because what they said is true doesn't mean that everything else they've ever said needs to be believed because that's one of the tricks that they use. False teachers will use truth, get you to admit to it, and then get you to trust them based on that truth so that you'll believe things that they say that aren't true because you've turned off your critical process. Don't be in that position. You need to be intellectually honest. Secondly, when it comes to intellectual honesty, you want to make sure that not only are you filtering intellectually honestly, but you are presenting things that are intellectually honest. A false system needs falsehood in order to be able to promote it. You can't teach false doctrine without having a false manner to do so. So if you have to present something that's a little sideways, you can't just come right out and say the truth. You need to seriously think about whether or not you're being intellectually honest with what you're teaching. That also means that you need to be willing to change when you're confronted with actual facts. Not things that people say that are facts, but you need to go back and if they have said something that's incorrect, you need to be able to repudiate that. If they've said something that's correct, even though it's deeply embedded in you and you're currently heavily invested in a particular viewpoint, you need to be willing to be intellectually honest enough to capitulate. That's what makes it so hard to win converts from false doctrines is because they are so heavily invested and they don't want to lose face that they will not change even if they know the truth. Don't be that person. Thirdly and lastly, you need to make sure you're always asking questions. And if you're around people that don't want you to ask questions, if they don't have answers to the questions that you have, then there's a problem. Because you ought to always be able to ask questions. Why should you want to ask questions? Because they lead you back to the source. The right questions always lead you to the truth. The right questions. And you have people who want to change um, the source that you're headed to. When you get to the source that those people are putting in front of you, if it's not the word of God, you've got a problem. You need to ask those questions because you need to get to the source of where their claims are coming from. You need to be able to evaluate that. And if they don't want you to evaluate their source, you need to get it far away from them. Because if they can't substantiate or they don't want you to know, there's a problem. Because there's nothing like that about the Word of God. And also, the second reason you want to ask questions is because they create touchstones in your life so you can continually go back and fact check to make sure that those things are still accurate. 
as additional truth and additional facts come in, you need to have touchstones already there so that you can make controlled change if necessary when additional truth is, is uh, presented. The thing about the truth is it always witnesses of itself. So that means if there's already truth in the touchstones you have, when additional truth presents itself, it will easily attach to what you have. So be willing to change when new truth is presented, if necessary. Be willing to not change when things are presented that are not true. Asking the questions to get to the source and create those touchstones will do that for you. I've gone a little long on this video, but I appreciate your patience as we've covered these basic principles about critical thinking. And I really hope that you join us as we go into the doctrinal series so that we can continue to help you think about sound doctrine and false doctrine in a way that be pleasing to God and in a way that is biblically foundational. I definitely appreciate your time. You have a great rest of your day.